with our special guest on Sports Day a little earlier. We didn't tell you who it was. It's a bit of a mystery, but of course that audio lets you know who it is. Three games for Tonga, 13 state of origins for New South Wales, through the glory years too was. for New South Wales. Mm. 24, what about that, 24 tests for the mighty kangaroos. And you know you've made it when they've made, when your opposition fans make a, sun, a sign that says, uh, you may have a, was it a big willy, but we've got a great, got a great tongue. tongue. Love yeah. it. Yeah. And he's one of the most devastating forwards of the modern era, of course. <laughs> Premiership winner with the doggies. Willie Mason joins us. How are you, Will? Hey, Willie. Hey, guys. That's right. How are we? Good. Yeah, How's life well. with you? Yeah, I can't complain, mate. It's, um, it's all good, mate. I'm just, um, just chilling out, just doing a little bit of training here, just doing all the stuff that I wanted to do when I finished playing, you know, just trying to help out some young kids, do a little bit of coaching, doing my own podcasting. Sort of creating my own lane. Actually, sort of thing. So, we're going to um, talk to you about that. It's a yeah. it's a great podcast levels podcast you do with uh, with the scope yeah. by Justin Horror. We're going to talk about that very very soon and a little bit about your coaching yep. as well. But I've got to say, Will, you are looking mighty lean. Oh, he's fit. Very lean. Yeah, and I train a lot as well. I suppose. Um, well, you know, like even you know, you two guys are in good nick as well. Like I suppose, you know, if you looked at those guys that played in the eighties and nineties, and a few guys that let themselves go, and you're, you're at New South Wales or Queensland sort of functions, and you see these guys that are you know extremely overweight, and, and even now, like with um, dementia and Alzheimer's and all these sort of um, chronic diseases, all because of you know obviously a lot of hits in the head and this diet and everything like that. Like so, a lot more information out there now, fellas. So it's mm. just like you sort of got to. Very, I take that serious, you know. I don't really want to. I don't want to have all those problems when I'm in like fifties and sixties, seventies. You know, I'm only I'm only forty three years old, so I'm, I'm thinking like life's just starting now. Yeah, I commend you on that. So man. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't be gone. I don't be out of here in twenty years. You know, so <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to look at it, mate. About different things. Great way to look at it. Yeah. I, I um, mate, I saw you down at the nines this year. Yeah, you, you had a little run at the at the uh, NRL nines. <laughs> well, no, was it the Aussie nines down Aussie at nines, the yeah. You had a little run. Now, did that give you a did, – did it take you back? Did you think, gee, I miss it? Or is it like, geez, I'm glad I don't do this anymore? No. <laughs> yeah, geez, I'm glad I don't do it. That, that's exactly where – you know when you just retire? You blokes have been through it before me. Yeah. You just retire and you think, yeah, I can still run. I can still do these things. I played in a few little little tournaments here and there. You still, I didn't have an itch to play at a higher level, but you go, I could still probably run around. No, nah, not at 43. You're like, get me off the field <laughs> as quick as you can. Well, we, we did enjoy it was, the festivities. It was good fun. It was good to raise money. It was, uh, it was a bit of fun. You do all those things for fun now. We're all like that. Mm. I mean, even with Willie Tonga, like, <laughs> I'm not sure if you've seen how good Willie Tonga looks. He oh, looks unbelievable. Insane. <laughs> and, he's, and I'm like, mate, you need to stop playing. This is when, this is when we get in the Achilles rupturing uh, air territory. Yes, yes. You know what do. I mean? Like when you're in your 40s, 50s, it's like you think you still got it. You can move off some sand or grass or whatever. And next minute something goes pop. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing that. Well, no Toddy Carney, Toddy Carney, last week ruptured his bicep. Oh, so Birdie did his Achilles at the at the nines. Oh, oh it was old. Yeah, yeah, Birdie did. I did my. I ruptured my bicep at training like <laughs> six months ago. So things, things don't things Chill just out. don't go like yeah, you'll be fine in two weeks. They start rupturing. So it's like yeah, I'm done with all that. Yeah, mm. yeah. Now, mate, I just wanted yeah, Birdie. So I'm sorry, Birdie did his Achilles at that nines. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Just for chasing a ball, <laughs> he chased the ball down, and it was game over. Yeah. He's had he's a down four tries, and he's, it's just his competitiveness, and everyone's yeah. still got it. But I'm like, I'll let it go when it comes out. Just let the young balls go. Yeah, yeah. So, mate, you, you've been doing some work with the Bulldogs. Um, they had a great, yeah. great result last week against the Sharkies. Jeez, they, they played some – Titans. T- Titans, sorry. Um, they played some great Titans. footy. Uh, did you see that coming? or Because they weren't that bad in the first two weeks, minus the result, of course. They didn't get the wins, but they were playing some decent footy. They just couldn't get the points on the board. Did you see that – that sort yeah, of a, right. a win coming? You're right. It was sort of building, Rat, you know, because you know, Parramatta, if you look at all the statistics and everything like that, and, um, and you look at our side, and Par- Parramatta's a, they're a top four side. They're decent. They could have mm. put 50 on us, but they only put, like, what was a try? I think it was the final score. There was like four tries to two. It wasn't yeah. that, there wasn't that crazy. And then Cronulla were good for 60, and then like just the class of the Nico Hines and Will Kennedy, and you know what I mean? Just the, the amount of ball that they had, plus playing at Shark Park. Few little calls going against us. And I'm yep. like, we're not that far. I didn't think we were like 32 nil far. Yeah, right. I think um, you know, and, and, you know, you think of momentum switches and everything like that, and you go, what if Brimson catches that ball in the first five minutes and you're over? And next minute, six nil at Belmore. You know, you're like, m- maybe mentally our boys go, oh, it's happening again. You know, but it didn't. They end up, you know, they end up coming through that. Brimson end up knocking the ball on and. 
We ended up getting 32 points on them. I was more happy with the zero. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't a 32. It was just the defensive... Um, the, the amount of detail that Ciro has in his defensive systems, that's, that's, that's the, the hard work of that. It took 18 months to get that sort of... The duck egg there at the end. So I think he'd be more happy with that than yeah, 32. Nice. nice. Now, I love how both you and and Justin Horro, you describe those good hard forwards, the guys you want in the trenches, it's it's actually a good phrase. You call them dogs, as in dogs. D A W G S. Yeah, now, cool dogs. talking about your bulldogs, yeah. guys, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure you'd think Jake and Preston was a dog. Yeah, Jake Jake Preston's got that in here. Kurt Moran as well. We've got some little guys there that they're not that big, but they just go at it, right? They just um they train hard. They're always the best. They're always the best trainers. Go. They, they're well below their weight in um back rollers and locks. Like Kurt Moran comes on and plays in the front row mm. or lock. He's, he, he'd be 92 kilos, non-stop drinking protein shakes and doing everything <laughs> like just to put on size. And then, then you just, you know, he's one of those blokes and he just won't get that big. He's not six foot five. He's not built like Tino. He's not built like Fanua Blake or Payne Haas and all these big guys out there, but they just go at it and like rip in every single session and, and that's all you can ask them and those younger kids and they're trying to set their own culture there everyone talks about culture but it's, that's up to the coaches man and the players to set it's not up to former players or anything to come mm. in and say this is what we did no 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 yeah that's exactly what you said exactly that's what we did this is you this is 2024 it's not 2004 you know so it's up to those young kids to set their culture what they want to stand for and the coaches to drive it that's it yeah it's a good way to look that's how easy it is and then you just go do what you want Let's take, a, let's take a step back and look at throughout your career. Now, we've got some audio here, uh, Will. Now, you love to chat in a bit of a banter on the field. Now, this goes back yeah. to 2015 against the Dragons. Have a listen. You need some decent front rowers. <laughs> so, speak to Mary. <laughs> hey, where? Where are they? I can't see shit. <laughs> now, <laughs> Here's your blow in there, big you mate. Love, you, <laughs> you love the sledge. I was <laughs> <laughs> Boy, rat! You know that was against. It was against like a young Tyson Frizzell. Oh, yeah. nice! <laughs> they put him in the. He was in the. He was in the back row. He's I a said, killer I now. Saying, I touched his breast. I touched his breast and said, "How much you bench, big boy?" <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, if you tell me he goes off oh, at one sixty, I said I can bench more." <laughs> yeah, uh, nice, nice. Now, now you, mate, no, was... that was good fun. I used to be the game. It brings back memories because the game was always fun to me, guys. Like it was mm. never like. No hardcore animosity. You know, I played a few Origins and Tests and that. You're supposed to have that sort of ferocity when you play those games. But when it's club, you play game. I used to play the game hard and fair, and it was just always fun. When it was wasn't fun, I was, I stepped away from the game, and it just happened to be at 36. I had a good run with injuries and kept in good shape and everything like. That. But yeah, it was a fun factor for me. Like, I just loved hanging out with the boys and just you get. I just couldn't believe you just. We live. We live the dream, guys. The dream. That's what I think. Like when we were twelve, when we were twelve, we wanted to live our whatever we've done in our careers, right? Yeah. Play for Australia, play for Queensland Grand Finals. We we've done that. So I look at myself going, wow, I've lived that whole dream when I was like fourteen, fifteen, young kid, Toronto West, one of eight, buried his dad at seventeen, commission houses, all that sort of garbage sob story. So you know, that's just, that, that's, just, that's just my story. It's not a sob story. And then I lived whatever I did, and I, I was just in that 0.2% that achieved everything in the game. And I'm like, what a fun ride. That's the way I look at it. I've got a lot of gratitude towards the game, and um, that's why I look at it. And I just try and bring up these next kids with that same mentality, you know, because everyone's not, everyone's not blessed with great upbringings and everything like that, you know. Um, and that's what, I, that's what I, I really pride myself in with doing with the Bulldogs, with the pathways and these kids that are cut from that different sort of cloth, you know. Mm. It's just having being present with these younger guys and just, you know, they, they look at the end. What they do is they look at the end story. They don't look at the start. Like, mm. dude, I said, I was a kid from Toronto West at 17 that come down to Belmore. Yeah. Like, I'm doing what you did, young kid. You know, like, that's why I, that's why I can relate to these younger kids. Yeah. So that's why I love what I'm doing. Yeah, mate. You, well, you... You, you did do it all, Mason. Uh, mate, it was a pleasure to watch too. It wasn't wasn't much fun when you were running at me. I can, I can assure you of that. But mate, you, you played through an era in New South Wales, great era for New South Wales. And I wanted to yeah. ask you what your take on like a Gus Gould. What made Gus Gould like a Wayne Bennett like uh, at Origin level? Like what what was it that made it made it so special for him? How did he get the most out of his players? I suppose he had that influence on us. So when you're a 15-year-old kid, what did you see? You saw Gus winning. You saw Bradley Clyde winning. Like about, around about the 94, 95, when you're a really young, impressionable kid. Next minute, you're getting coached by him. Mm. When you're 23, 24, 
and he has that aura about him. The way and you hear all these things about him, you know, the mystique and how 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 obsessed he is with the game, the detail, the stories. The, the, you know, like the you know, like he can tell he's the best storyteller of all time. He'd hold court and he'd just tell him all these stories about the old days, and we'd just sit around there just like a bunch of young kids, and it was like. We just we were just in awe of Gus, and then the detail come in. So like you know you know all the analyzer, all that sort of stuff come in around about two thousand three, two thousand four. Mm, they yep. had every single every single player. Every, it was it was the NRL analyzer, whatever it's called. He created that whole thing. Him and his mate just sit up there and just do video all night, cutting on cutting different players of what side of the field they carry the ball in, and all just so much detail. I've never had so much detail in my life. And then you go back to club football, be a way better player. But he was just. He was different. He was just really different. The, the brain on that man, that, he taught me so much when I was at a, at a really young, impressionable age as well, like around about like 22, 23, I started playing rep. 21, yeah, 21 when I first got into the rep sides and stuff. He's just, he just, he has that aura and he still does. He still has it. He, uh, he mesmerizes me. I've never yeah. had much to do with him, but I, I love listening to him from whether it's operationally, coaching. He's just, he's got a good opinion on the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. he's phenomenal. Now, I want to show, take some. Another bit of audio, Mace, which I'm pretty sure would be one of the your, your greatest yeah. individual moments of your life. Have a listen to this. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce the 2004 Clive Churchill medalist as best player on field in the grand final. That man is Big Willie Mason. So, Will, how does that make you feel when you hear audio like that again? Yeah, it is. It's, it's special, guys. Thanks mm. for all this. I'm you're bloody making me blush, but um, <laughs> yeah, just hearing those words, you know, like it's just like it really brings. That's twenty years ago, guys. I know. Yep. Twenty years ago this year, we got twenty years. Time flies. You know what I mean? I've known you guys for over twenty years. That, yep. That's what that means. You know what I mean? We've known each other for twenty years. You know, because that's when I hit, hit the scene around about then, um, mate. It just brings back great memories. Just great memories, and um, you just sort of, I sort of, I live my life now, and it's like. I don't really look at myself as, a, as as that footy player, right? It's just it was like a lifetime ago. Yeah, feels like it was fifty years ago. Then I hear this, and then like you obviously watch these things on YouTube, and people send you stuff, and you're like, did I actually do that? Like, yeah. it's, like, it's like I've lived two lives. Like I went, I, you know that you know you guys probably know what I'm going through. I'm like, yeah, yeah when I, I turned pro when I was eighteen and retired at thirty six, and then. You know, like started a family at thirty nine, and now that's what I'm doing now. It's like it's like it's totally different. It's a totally different mindset of like of when I was playing, and like yeah, it's it's, it's totally it's 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 a, it's a spinner really. When I listen to things and I watch things, I'm like, did I actually play like that? I couldn't do that. There's no way I can do that now. Oh man, you know, like, I'm you know, the you same. You look at these young kids training, and you look at them training and just smashing each other, and like this is the way it's got to be. Right? This has always been like it's just cutthroat, and I'm like. How do I get? How do you get through that? It's just like it's so harsh on these kids. I'm just like, this is a dog sport. This is only, this is the, this is this is why that one percent. This is only that one percent make it. That's why. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know why? That's mm. it. Like you, we were those guys, and it's just like. It's surreal sometimes. Mate, now you've got Levels Podcast, which you know we both listen to. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great enjoyable. listen. So if, you, if you're out there and you haven't listened to Levels Podcast, jump on there and check it out. But on, the, on last week, on the back of Reese Walsh having to drive back from Penrith last week because he had his fractured eye socket and couldn't get in a pressurised yeah. cabin. So he had to sit in, a, sit in a car for 10 hours. So on the Mowers Club, Justin Horro, he, he said uh, if, if you had to nominate one person that he didn't want to sit in a car with for 10 hours, he nominated you. <laughs> What what have you got to say about that? What's what's going on there with Scope? Mate, all he does is sit on his phone anyway and just punt. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he'd be the, he'd be my last one as well. <laughs> no conversation. He's navigate. He just sits there and just he sits there. Yeah, he's never he's never present. He's always on his phone. He's just looking at shit. I'm just like I just can't cop that. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey, we uh, we like Mate, to ask. If, if you could pick anyone, you'd probably pick me because I'd actually talk to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. Now, um, Mace, we like to ask our guests uh, each time they come on, and we ask uh, this about Michael McGuire with his coaching coming yep. up for New South Wales. And if there was a player mm, that you yes. had a perception about, a player you had a perception about, you didn't know them, but you had this perception about. Oh, was, for me, it was Adam McDougall until I met him. I thought this guy's a great guy. I never thought this, but <laughs> was there a guy you had a, a player you had a perception about, and then all of a sudden you got picked in a rep team with him, or you actually had a night out with him, and you thought, you know what, my perception was wrong. Oh, yeah, hundred percent, Luke O'Donnell. 
Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Remember Luke O'Donnell? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was a psycho when we were coming through, <laughs> and everyone just thought, what is this guy's deal, right? He's getting suspended for 12 weeks. He's dropping elbows on people's heads. And he's, he's a Campbell team. He's, he's a Liverpool boy, right? So mm-hmm. he's a, did, you, did any of you guys play with him? Oh, you, you played, played against him. Played against Plenty of times. Played against him. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah. So remember you had those look in his eyes and just like, and I'm like, he was the same age. We're going for the same positions. But I got I got the jump on him because he, he was a bit injured at the start. So when we used to go at each other, like, we were going at it, right? And then, like, in 2005, he makes the Kangaroo Tour. He's the only one from the Cowboys. And everyone's like, yeah. So there was no other teammate apart from him. It was just him, <laughs> yeah. right? And he was a New South Wales boy. He never played New South Wales or anything like that. And then we met, and it was just like, well, we're just long-lost brothers. We're, we're still great mates to this day. <laughs> but I'm like, he, even Marco Mealy hated him. Everybody in the whole team <laughs> hated him. <laughs> he's first, he's first mo- his first time that he ever met the, the whole Aussie team, we were sitting in London, right? <laughs> and obviously, it's a PG story. So, you know, Dar- Darren Lockyer, the king of kings, yeah. he's captain of the 2004 Darryl. team. Yeah. And then, like, Luke O'Donnell is just like, got a beer and just squirt, yeah, boys. Like, no one's even seen him ever, ever had a beer and just squirt it straight in Lockie's eye. And just, <laughs> oh, I was no. just like, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it was, a, it was the worst, worst moment for him because he was trying to fit in and then he does it to Lockie <laughs> and sprays it on his eye and Lockie can't see it. I'm just like, oh, what's wrong with you, Donsky? But he, he, he had that, he had that like, oh, God, you didn't know what you had because you, you both, both played against him. He is a psycho, right? Oh, yeah, yeah crazy. Off the field, legendary person. Mm. But, yeah, he was that, that perception was like, you just didn't know what you were going to get. And he's, and off the field, if you know him now, like he's one of the nicest, most loyal people in the world. Yeah, good. Mm. Awesome. So that's mate, my man. We, we've got a little, bit of, uh, a little bit more audio for you to have a listen to here. And, and we just wanted to ask you about yeah. this particular conversation that you had prior to that 2004 grand final. Here on the line goes Willie yeah. Mason. I was like, yeah, who, who the hell is this? He goes, it's Russell Crowe. I said, no, I said, no way it is. He goes, no, 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 Willie, it's, it's Russell Crowe. I said, oh, okay, how you going, mate? And he's like, he's giving me this whole spiel. Of, I swear to God, this is when Gladiator was just coming out. I mean, not just coming out, it was out. So everybody knew about, you know, Marcus Aurelius and the big speech that he gave. And, you know, I was just sort of listening to it. I put it on loudspeaker so, so General could hear. I said, look, it's Russell, it's Russell Crowe. He goes, no, well, I said, it's Russell Crowe. And he go, and he, I swear to God, if he, I think he's a psychic. He, he give me every single tip what to do on the day and do this. He goes, I'm backing you in for Clive Churchill and all that kind of stuff. And, and it ended up happening. So, mate, that, that must have been a bit of a thrill, though. Like, at that time, to get a call from Russell Crowe, does he, like, he obviously knows his footy pretty well, uh, Mace. Loves it. Loves his footy. I've still got a relationship with him now, but, and... That was just like, it was like, he, like speaking it into existence, wasn't it? Wasn't it? He was, it was like a week of the grand final breakfast and all and that sort 20, of stuff. And I'm like... 24 years old. I'm 23 years 23. old. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, so I'm, it's Russell Crowe. You know, that voice and everything. I said, oh, you know, I've obviously said a few more swear words. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, no, no way. I said, general, it's Russell Crowe. And then it, then there's when the whole team's in the room and I've got him on speaker. And then I said, it's Russell Crowe. And then he's, he gives me this whole big spiel. Like, you know, it was just like he's just... I was going to go, wow, thanks, mate. It was just like good, like, three or four minutes, big, long soliloquy. It was crazy. I was just like, wow. He's, uh, he's next up. And then he goes, all right, sorry, big boy. Bang, hung up. <laughs> On my signal. Yeah. Unleash yeah. hell. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Unleash hell. Oh, Hey, Mace, oh, so good. it's been awesome to catch up with you. You're so refreshing to listen to. I love you know, also looking back on your career as well and what a career it was and also what you're doing now. You're doing some great things Appreciate with it. some young rugby league players. Love the podcast, Levels Podcast. Listeners, if you haven't listened to it, and Willie Mason, we'll talk to you next time on Sports Day. Appreciate it, guys.